So in this video, I want to illustrate a design that would achieve a backup or back failover scenario for your ISP circuit. And imagine that this is your enterprise network with perimeter firewalls or routers. In this case, I'm using 40, 40 gate, 40 net firewalls, 40 gates, and I'm using SD-WAN for the uh, SD-WAN feature to fail over. Now, this design is, the objective of this design is that you would use your primary ISP as the path to go out, no matter what the latency or packet loss is. So I'm not monitoring SD-WAN with dual links, but I'm doing SD-WAN between two different firewalls that are active and active, but they're not synchronizing between each other. So they're in acting independently as two active firewalls. And one is the primary firewall and the other one is the backup firewall with the backup ISP circuit. If that is your goal, the way you can potentially one or one way of achieving that with the firewalls and two ISP circuits, I mean, there's different designs with BGP and when you are public routing advertisement and all that stuff. And I'm not doing any BGP or IBGP here. I'm just making that extremely simple for me, small to medium firewalls with primary ISP and a backup ISP who do not want to get routers and their circuits are coming into firewalls. So instead of having an active and standby backup firewall, you would bring those two circuits into two firewalls, not in back active backup, but active active, but not synchronized as active active. Okay. The difference between active in this fashion and the actual active active is that you got to run HSRP uh, and the next top four the users will be this L3 here. In this case, the L3 next top for the users is the core L3 switch in the enterprise and all the users come here first. They would be directed to the internet or the van through a default route that gets advertised from the firewall. So the firewall will advertise a default route. This would be your better route and this would be your worst route, default route. That way, when this guy fails, the ISP fails, this default route would disappear and this would become your default route that your core L3 switch would take. And we're going to use OSPF to learn these default routes. So the OSPF would be configured on the firewalls and they would be advertising the default routes into your core L3 switch. <clears throat> so here's the setup with the addressing scheme uh, set up, put up here already. And I've deliberately put this link as 100 milliseconds just to illustrate the difference when it, you know, changes or switches over to a secondary backup just for illustration purposes doesn't mean that you have to do that. So this link here is 100 milliseconds um, latency and this link here, the backup one is 20 milliseconds just for illustration purposes. On the internet side, I'm simulating an internet connection with a default route on the VOS one. This one, this path is a, is a better default route with higher uh, lower weight, and this one is a backup with the worst uh, worst path with the lower weight. So he would always prefer this default route just for this demonstration. And once this link goes down here, he would automatically choose this path. So this is essentially your primary path for the users to go from your core L3 switch all the way to the internet and back. Again, these firewalls are configured. There is no backup firewall. This firewall fails, circuit fails, anything in this path fails, the core L3 switch, this could be redundant, would take a backup firewall and a backup ISP circuit. Okay, so that's the objective here. And 
this is how I have configured the VOS 1 with simple default route and a dummy interface that VOS 2 is going to be pinging. This guy is going to be reaching 200.222 and it's taking this route. And when this route fails, it will switch to this route. When this route comes back, it will switch back to this route. So you're going to have to configure SD-WAN. Typically, SD-WAN is two or more interfaces on the same device. But here, what I'm trying to illustrate is that you still have to do SD-WAN with one single link to monitor an internet address. So you're monitoring this internet address with the SD-WAN. And the firewall will only generate default route when it is able to reach this guy. If it's not able to reach this guy, the firewall would stop, automatically stop advertising the default route. So let's take a look at first, let's just take a look at the VOS3 and see how that behaves. So VOS3 is, VOS2, sorry, is this one. And he is going, <clears throat> so he's running a ping to 200.222 and the latency is 100 milliseconds as I illustrated right here. So it's taking the primary path. All right, so now we're gonna do a failover and See what happens. I would go to my internet BIOS, which is this guy, and I would fail the link. This is band two, this is band one. Disconnect, okay. And it's gonna fail over to the secondary path. <clears throat> the primary path comes back up. So that's your objective is to keep taking the primary path. And it would flip back or switch back to your primary path as soon as OSPF converges. converges. OSPF may take time depending on your timers, but right now I'm using default timers. So it converges. And let's take a look at your internet router for this for illustration purposes. It's basically got two default routes, one within preferred path less weight and the other one with the higher weight which is going to the secondary path just for this illustration path purposes the core l3 router or switch would get a default route from the primary side and vios does not give you the cost uh, the actual cost, it just gives you the default cost for some reason. But you got to go into the database post, we have to look at the cost of the link. But uh, we're not going to do that here. But this path is going through 10.0.0.10, which is this path, the primary path. When this fails, this default route would disappear and he would take a default route from this path. So let's make a note on via 10.0.0.10. And when we fail this guy, it would take the route from 10, 1. There it is. So now the default route is coming from 10, 1. Even though I've increased the cost here, it's not showing, this is just VOS thing, <clears throat> all right? So dynamic default route propagation through firewalls using SD-WAN. That's what this design lets you do. And let's connect that back and it'll show you 10, zero. 
zero pass. OSPF takes time to converge, but when it does, you should see 10, 0, 0, 10 as your next path. There it is. So it take, took a little bit, <clears throat> but anyway, so that's the default route dynamically coming, injecting and, and withdrawing in this, in this design. So let's take a look at the firewall. What are the things that you got to do to make this work on the 40 gate firewall? So I use 40 gate. I know Palo does it too. Uh, ASA doesn't do it uh, to my knowledge. But if you think ASA, Cisco ASA does it too, let me know. But 40 gate and Palo does it. Uh, it dynamically injects default route into OSPF. So obviously you got to enable OSPF on this link and OSPF on this link. So let's take a look at the 40 gate firewall configuration. So your interfaces are straightforward. You go to network and then interfaces. See if I can make it a little bigger. And port one is your management. Port two is your LAN link, at your LAN link, and then port three is your LAN link. You are configuring OSPF with area zero, and you are advertising it on 10. This is firewall two. So you're advertising the two networks. This is all networks, basically. 10.1 is facing towards BIOS 2, but you're doing a passive interface on the, the, the link that's facing the internet. Okay, here's the interface, port three, the cost is 100. So in OSPF, if you want to add, you know, increase the cost, of this interface, if you want this cost to be advertised to this guy, you have to increase the cost here, outgoing cost. So his outgoing cost would be changed here so that OSPF can advertise that cost here. If you change the cost here, it's not gonna affect it. The other way to do it is, is uh, do it on the core th layer three link, change the cost here for the outgoing. But uh, I just did it here, advertise OSPF, and made it passive interface so that it dynamically, you don't have to touch the whole core L3 routers uh, for doing that because you, you may have other stuff connected to it. Two ways to do it. But anyway, the configuration here for Firewall 3 is that you have this interface that's going towards the BIOS 1 with a higher cost. And in the advanced option, you have passive interface. You don't want to advertise OSPF towards the internet, so you just made it passive. Notice that I'm not doing redistribute connected, even though, or redistribute static, even though I have static routes. And why is that? Because static routes, I'm using SD WAN to achieve that. So. If I was not using SD WAN, I would go in OSPF and redistribute static. Or if and I, but my intention here not I'm not going to use always because my intention here is to dynamically advertise default route into OSPF using SD WAN and SD WAN is monitoring the link up and down. Okay, so now. The SD WAN zone is straightforward. I just have one interface. And SD WAN rule is straightforward. It basically says I'm not watching any latency based rules. I'm just saying best quality and I'm monitoring this address 200. All right. And there's only one interface. Performance SLA is again 200 and I'm not doing anything fancy, so I'm not using SLA target, okay? I don't have two links on a single firewall, so I don't need to use this to switch over. A simple uh, SD-WAN configuration, simple SLA configuration, static routes using SD-WAN, 
and this would enable your static route to get injected in OSPF using regular area and you don't even have to do redistribute connected or static. It's exactly the same configuration for firewall one, nothing different there, but that would give you the objective to achieve the objective here. And OSPF here is also not getting redistributed static, regular area. I'm not doing any passive because I'm not advertising the interface towards the internet. It's really a technical detail is not easy to follow, but the idea or the objective of the of this video is that if you have to put up a design, if you got two ISP situations and you just want to use one for primary purpose and the other one for backup only, you can achieve that through routers, which is Cisco routers by default, you uses IP SLA and they, you can do a lot of good configuration in Cisco routers to generate an OSPF default route. Uh, Juniper and Arista, you have to write scripts, <clears throat> but with the firewalls, um, Halo and Fortinet does support SD-WAN capability with OSPF, integrated with OSPF to let you do this and I like that because, you know, you may be, you know, most of the enterprise, small to medium enterprise only has something like this. If you want to load balance, then obviously you got to have firewall connected to uh, the two inter interface ISPs together. And, and then you are, you have to be in an active backup and that whole topology and design is going to be different. But here it is much more simpler. You're just using primary and backup with OSPF and SD-WAN. Hope this helps.